Not Nerd Podcast, episode 376. Make sure that you can make sure. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me, as always, Mr. Dave Baylor. And to all of our U.S. listeners, I would like to remind them that we're recording on President's Day. Yes. The most exciting holiday. Yes, since I planet. reminded you that it existed <laughs> this morning before we started recording. And I, and I, I remembered because of that that I had the day off. <laughs> I was going to go into work. Um, so the thing about President's Day, I remember as a kid, it was, you know, I don't know about you, but when I was in grade school, we'd always do arts and crafts for the holiday. So if it was, um, uh, what's the shamrock one with the Irish? St. Patrick's Day. Oh, St. Patrick's Day, of course. St. Patrick's Day, we'd, we'd cut out the little four-leaf clovers and the oh, little yeah. leprechaun guy. We'd color them and we'd take it home. And then, then President, President's Day, I always remembered it and because it was right around Valentine's Day and then we, it'd be kind of the same thing. Yeah. And so uh, those two holidays have a clash together yes. in my mind. <laughs> uh, but I often do not think of President's Day. I, I have forgotten it now. Yeah. So my apologies to all of our former presidents who have been um, honored by President's Day. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, my daughter, first grade, they she brought home a, uh, if I was president, little story thing oh. she did. And basically that um, she would get... Everybody would get a hundred guinea pigs. <laughs> wow! Um, no, I don't want to vote for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, her platform would go to work. I think she also said something about getting rid of all the bad drugs too. So oh. that one I can get behind. But yeah, the hundred guinea pigs. Having two guinea pigs, yeah, a uh, hundred would be a bit much. But. And the, the drug thing, of course, is complicated because it's kind of been tried before. So yes. good luck with that one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let us get into some follow up. I told you guys I would let you know. What about my experiment with Timu mm-hmm. that had the Super Bowl commercials and has a million Facebook ads. Well, I received my Timu hiking boots. Okay, and is it this is Timu brand? Well, right? the brand of these the brand? is Rymot, which I think is kind of made to uh, look like maybe Marmot or some other famous uh, brand. But I have not heard of any of these brands. Yes, I'm this. I don't do a lot of hiking, but I will say for seventeen dollars and free shipping. Are you kidding me? That's really cheap. It was worth the try, and I put them on for a little bit. Now I've got to just get motivated to hu- uh, hike, hug, hike. hike. Well, I um, like to hike, so if you're ever needing a partner to hike, yes, then. we should go on a hike, and we can film a video reviewing my uh, boots. But I do have uh, a link in the show notes. There is a. Um, I've got an affiliate code now for Uh-oh. Timu, so go well, on there, and if you use the link, you'll get 30% off your first order. And I, I do want to go in there and look around. I've done some brief scans of their page, but there's some really random stuff. But it, again, like we were talking about, it's so cheap that mm-hmm. I really want to go just buy some stuff because it looks like some some curiosities yes. available on there. Well, I clicked on the link, and it it must be cookie in me or something because a one piece foundation makeup sponge kit came mm-hmm. the first thing up and it's like you know me and my makeup yes yes indeed but they have got it all they've there. got it all but joking aside there's a window cleaning brush kit that also came up it's it's a short handled brush that you yeah. use to clean the inside of your windshield i'm like brilliant that's yeah. so hard to clean that and how much thing. does it cost <laughs> 58 cents yes, exactly <laughs> oh my gosh yes. this is crazy yes indeed um and speaking of the super bowl uh and our buddy sbf oh yeah he, he is uh in some heat because uh for watching the super bowl now you may ask is he banned from watching the Super Bowl? No, but he is not supposed to be using VPNs, and apparently he had to use a VPN to connect to some account in the Bahamas to be able <laughs> yeah. to watch the Super Bowl because his yeah. millionaire parents don't have cable or yeah, yeah. an antenna in the house. Yeah, and far be it from him to download the NFL app on his iPhone and watch it that way or yes. you know, air, air play it to his TV yeah, or something. So he, One of the 900 cannot, other ways. <laughs> Stop doing things that he's not supposed to do. He's got this syndrome that I will name. Uh, 
above the law yes, syndrome yes. where he feels like even the way he's spoke to the media yeah, and yeah. the prosecutors and stuff it's just kind of like eh, yeah yeah rules don't apply to me yes invincibility that yeah. uh, young males tend to need some life lessons before they can adjust their invincibility so hopefully yes. he'll learn some life lessons uh the big hubbub around twitter this week is that you would only be able to get sms two-factor authentication if you're a twitter blue subscriber you'd be able to use an authentication app and i actually saw there was a tweet from uh, mkbhd marquez brownlee that was like uh, rule number one of business don't start charging for something that was free before but elon replied to his tweet and said that the phone carriers were charging up uh faulty fees to the tune of like $60 million per year where they were doing fake messages that was somehow charging. They were billing. I don't know how it works. They were billing Twitter. So Twitter was spending like $60 million a year on these fake messages coming through for the SMS two-factor authentication. Now, were they originating from the carriers or were people using the carriers to I think, spam them? I think maybe it was like you know, lesser known carriers or something that were just sending these messages to Twitter that was charging somehow. Again, I don't know how the, all that works, but according to Elon, he's saving his company another $60 million a year by turning this off. And I do, and really SMS two-factor authentication, it's better than none at all, but yeah. it is not the safest thing. And really in 2023, you're probably at the point where you have some sort of two-factor authentication app in your life, I hope, yeah. if you listen to us at all. Well, I would <clears throat> I would venture to guess that most people do not have that. Yeah. It's, uh, you, you would hope. You would hope. Yes. But well, it's the, the friction is high enough that yes. I finally, um, I guess, a quick follow-up. Um, we're still in follow-up, aren't we? Yes. yes. I finally switched over to Bitwarden as my two-factor oh, yeah, yeah. thing, and I'm really enjoying clicking on my watch, and then I can just uh, get your codes. Get my little code right nice. there. It's so convenient and handy. But for people who don't have an Apple Watch, and it's not that easy to do, to just by looking at your wrist, you gotta like get your phone, open up the app, see the code, type the code in the thing, and oh no. It, expired yeah. i gotta type a new code there's some serious friction there so yes and um there is an update at the end of the article uh that i just saw that says as rachel toback points out twitter's own transparency data shows that as of december 2021 only 2.6 percent of twitter users had two-factor turned on and 74 percent of those users were using sms as their two-factor so it was a pretty small percentage yes. of people anyway so yes. i can see it making sense to turn it off but maybe here's the rule that marquez should have brought up don't make major changes to your platform without communicating clearly to your customers yes, yes. that's yes. the piece that they put Twitter's had some issues with. Yeah. Good call. Uh, another article to the chat GPT world. Um, the headline from futurism.com is Amazon begs employees not to leak corporate secrets <laughs> to chat GPT. Yeah. I looked at all these articles last night and I was yeah. just like, are you kidding me? But yeah, they, they go and say, you know, write me some code that does X, Y, Z or whatever, but it's, it's ingesting trade yeah. secrets and spitting them back out other places and so yes uh, i mean i guess if you're gonna play with fire you're gonna get burned yes yes and i didn't put a link in but um you know as microsoft rolls out their um version of chat gpt and the bing stuff there was a couple stories this week that um it would get really moody or angry much like anybody else on the internet after yeah. some time so they've had to put some limits where 
uh, I think Ben Thompson of Stratechery, he had like this two hour conversation with it and it just really kind of went off the rails. So wow. Microsoft has limited to it where you can have basically a five question conversation and then it kind of resets so that it before uh, it turns into a Nazi. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're, we're in the early days of all this stuff. And I'm not proud of this, but I have yet to use chat GPT. <laughs> I still haven't done it. I'm going to tie you down and <laughs> make you use it. I've done some of the image stuff because yes, I'm yes. so curious, but uh, the, the chat the tech stuff, stuff. Well, it's like, eh, but yeah. I need to get in there and do that, I guess. Yes, yes. And we were talking about the uh, U.S. government and NORAD uh, f- shooting down some balloons last yeah. week. <laughs> and um, it looks like one of the balloons, I don't think we knew this last week, was a, basically a $12 hobby balloon for a uh, weather hobby club or a ham radio hobby club uh, from Illinois because uh, their balloon that they had the ability to track has gone offline. So <laughs> Right over Alaska where the one balloon was shot down. Yes, yes. Well, so. I mean, it's kind of like that adage of if uh, the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> yes. And so when you have a $22 million uh, fighter jet, jet everything looks like four hundred thousand dollar <laughs> missiles <laughs> everything, everything looks like a balloon from china so. yes yeah, so yes but uh yeah so a couple hundred dollars of balloon and technology and I, I did see i believe that the government has decided to stop investigating and trying to figure out what these balloons were they shot down so yeah hey. uh, edward snowden of uh yeah leaker claim who lives in russia said something to the effect of uh it's not aliens i wish it were aliens but it's not aliens it's just the old engineered panic and attractive nuisance ensuring natsec reports get assigned to investigate balloon bs <laughs> rather than budgets or bombing so he's he thinks it's a deflection away yeah. from current events so uh it, it seems like the balloon story is going to die down and and especially if the Air Force is no longer investigating. Them. Yeah, yes, indeed. Um, and you no longer need to investigate when the new season of Ted Lasso is going to start. I want to just quickly say the season three official tr- teaser is out. Yeah, I have not watched the teaser, but I did see the article. So it premieres March 15th. Yes. So that's coming up. Yes, indeed. Uh, Costco, we haven't had any Wise news for a while, but Costco is starting to carry some Wise products. And I think I, I was in there the other day, and I think I walked by a Wise display and went, hmm, yeah. have they always carried these? Well, apparently they did not. And in Costco fashion, uh, they do not have the individual units. You can buy um, for $100 a floodlight cam with a Wise Cam 3 V3 security system so a couple cameras and the floodlight or you can buy the um, smart lamp sockets and cameras kit for a hundred bucks or for 120 bucks a four pack of the v3 cameras so they're costco packs right it doesn't seem like it's a that great of a deal you could buy the individual products for around the same price convenience the and for wise it's cool for them to be in costco because that's it's, huge exposure for them. It's a huge exposure and hopefully a cash uh, injection into their company so they can start improving their software. Yeah. Holy cow. And uh, a story that only I care about regarding the Wise Floodlight is a product that I don't need because after three or four years, they finally uh, put a bulb back in our street lamp up oh. here. And they, uh, they, they put a bulb in there that burns as bright as 10,000 suns. <laughs> and so I'm actually th- contemplating getting a cover for my car so that at night <laughs> it, doesn't it doesn't get exposure and then i'll take it off in the daytime when the sun is out the paint job yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway so yes. not a product i need right now no no and i think we mentioned that it went away but it was a pre i believe a previous pick of yours z library yes it that was. had gone away but they have come back uh, they've kind of found some clever workarounds uh, yes. to get around the U.S. government's crackdown. I, I poked around on this earlier uh, regarding the story, and I haven't tried to successfully log back into my account, but they're using a hybrid, or uh, sorry, they're using a Hydra 
type strategy where if you recall from i believe greek literature yeah. the hydra was a multi-headed oh, animal yes. and when you cut off one head three more heads sprout out so they have these different domains that they assign to each of the users if the government shuts down one it only affects that one person everybody else is on a different domain uh, so it's a pretty clever way to do this i think the pirate bay has done this also because they got shut down a yeah. year or so ago and they're back by the way yeah um, but but anyway this is great news for enthusiasts who want to read books that are not shackled by drm or yes. any of these other things and um so i have not gone in and looked for other items but yes it's there it's back i'm excited i love it that these things exist and a shout out to archive.org um oh, yeah. i was on there the other day and i can't it was i was looking for uh, a television episode of a show that i watch and I did some searches and it came up on archive.org and some people had uploaded <laughs> like current episodes of a show there. Um, not that I would condone that, but yeah. making content available yes. for people is generally always a good thing. Yes. When governments or businesses start shutting down and restricting uh, information, that's when you need to worry. So I love it that these things exist. Yes, yes. Well, we've had a lot of stuff in follow-up, and you've all been waiting eagerly, thinking, when is it coming? The next story's got to be it. Well, I saved the best for last. Microsoft, February 2023, <laughs> Patch Tuesday. I was wondering if this was going to be in the yeah, show today. It's yes, it is, it is here in the middle of February uh fixes three exploited zero days and 77 flaws wow that's incredible yes and we will be talking about um microsoft and windows a little bit later in the episode but first a little more exciting dave's pro tip of the week and this week i thought i would read the notes and see that you shanghaied yes uh, dave's pro tip of the week so Proceed, my friend. Proceed. Yes. Please yes. Proceed. Well, we uh, have a friend uh, that we text message with, and over the last couple of weeks, uh, we friend? had some, well... An acquaintance. Acquaintance. <laughs> uh, and we will keep this person anonymous. I don't want to expose their embarrassment, but they started seeing some weird activity on their Facebook account and somebody trying to reset the password, so they were fighting with that. And then all of a sudden one day, their Facebook account was just gone. It had been hijacked. Somebody and it is Face crazy that this is even possible. Yes, and Facebook had shut down the account because it had been hijacked, and some weird stuff was being posted. So I wanted to just share some tips because for many of us, our Facebook account is important. And the problem that this person—I don't want to mention their name—the problem that they had with their account is that the email address for the account was tied to a custom domain that they no longer owned. So they had uh, an email at toddwerkhoven.com <laughs> that they didn't own that domain anymore. So they And it looks like I was looking into it for this anonymous person yeah. that somebody else had actually bought the domain so they could have access to the email to be able to get into his Facebook account. Now, his or her, his or her, his, right, right, their right. Facebook account. Yeah. My tip, my main tip is make sure you have access to the email address that's connected to Facebook or whatever important accounts you have. You know, maybe you change your last name so you have a different email, or maybe it yeah. was tied to a work email. You can update that. Um, but second of all, I would uh, encourage, like we were talking about earlier, have two factor authentication set up on your Facebook account yeah. so that you can uh, make sure. And I actually have a little. We have another Facebook story coming up. Uh, I don't think that I have two factor on Facebook. Yes. Right now. Maybe yeah, I should I do think, that. And they actually have some pretty good systems in place um, to try to make sure it's you, but make sure that you can make sure it's you okay. uh, with Facebook or other accounts. Well, this has gotten me curious now. Am I able to get an email address at uh, toddworkhoven.com? Uh, like well, you would have to. And the post stuff, it was like Taliban stuff yeah. that was being posted on his account. Well, like, I'm not worried about that stuff. Account. I just want the handle, like David toddworkhoven.com. Yeah. 
Well, Whatever. if uh, if we can reacquire the domain name now that it's been, it was just sitting out there in the ether. Yeah. Uh, but uh, maybe it will come back up, and we can uh, get that and sell email addresses. Well, in all point. seriousness, I come across this all the time. People at my work who have had this email address for twenty years. Yeah. Everything is tied to this email address, and they either get fired or they quit or they die or whatever. Yeah. And we've got a problem of, hey, I need to get into my old email account because my bank statements are going there, and I and yeah. I, I tried to change <laughs> it, and it sent an email to my email. that. I, so people, we've had this tip before, but the major pro tip here, do not tie accounts and services yeah. to your work email address. Always make it a personal email address that you will always have control over. Yeah. Gmail is a great option. It's not going anywhere. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, let us move on to our takes of the week, which is related. Um, you know, everybody gave Elon and Twitter a bunch of flack for, oh, you got to pay to get features and, you know, got to pay to get verified. Well, uh, as of yesterday, February 19th, Mark Zuckerberg posted on Facebook, good morning, a new product announcement. Or I should, good morning and new product announcement. This week we're starting to roll out Meta Verified, a subscription service that lets you verify your account with a government ID, get a blue badge, get extra impersonation protection against accounts claiming to be you, and direct access to customer support. Nate, how did you get Mark on the show? Well, I, I called in a favor. Okay. Yes. Well, thanks for joining us, Mark, and reading that for us. Yeah. So they uh, meta verified. So um, if you had a hard time listening to my robot voice, so you'll get extra protection against impersonation, which happens a lot. You know, people set up fake accounts and try to friend request uh, oh. everybody on somebody's friend list. Yes. I have um, some people who have three accounts. I'm like, I don't know. Which yes. Ones are yes. Right account. Yes. I was trying to figure out which account I need to wish my aunt uh, happy birthday on because I'm friends with or three times, I think. But um, so, and you'll get direct access to customer support, which is a nice feature, but starts at $12 a month if you go through the web or $15 a month if you sign up through iOS. And what do I get for paying this money again? Uh, you get a blue check. Okay. Oh, okay. You get extra impersonation protection and direct access to customer support. Hmm. Now, I am gladly <laughs> paying. Seem, seem like anything I would no. use. Uh, I would. I am gladly paying for Twitter Blue, uh, but I have no inclination to have any reason to purchase this. Hmm. I guess uh, there are people out there who would, though. Yes, yeah. So if they can get people to pay it, then they make more money, which they like. And <laughs> they need uh, to get that stock price back up so I can sell my share. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and another meta story. Um, which I think is a good thing, and people often forget that this feature even exists, but Meta aims to increase transparency in ad targeting for Facebook and Instagram users. Uh, you can now add some additional ads preferences for the why am I seeing this ad tool, which is the part that people forget. People are like, why am I seeing this ad? Or, oh, I was just talking about this. Why do I get this ad? And if you just click, I think it's the little three dots, and look at the post, it'll show you uh, some information, but it looks like they're going to be giving uh, more information on why you're being targeted for certain ads. Facebook has ads? <laughs> yes. Not in my experience, they don't. <laughs> but that is a story for another day. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, more ad controls. So I think it is helpful to look at that every once in a while, and you'll see, well, because you're an adult male in the United States, you see this, or um, this event in Portland because you live in the area or something like that. So yeah, good little reminder on that. Uh, and just an interesting um, story that I find fascinating, and it, I saw it on cockkey.org, but it links to um, an article from the Marshall Project talking about cell phones in prison. Yeah, it's kind of an underground thing, but I, I, I still can't fathom how a prisoner can be writing a book or have a website or yes. do something and then the law enforcement can't go wait a minute <laughs> yeah maybe we, we should guy. search the guy's cell to see <laughs> yeah. if there's a phone and i mean how does it continue on once yeah. 
they make public uh, announcements or communications or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. Amazing. No. Yeah, one Texas prisoner I interviewed had been selling his work artwork online. <laughs> they yeah. use their phone to learn how to trade stocks or do online gig work. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff they do. There's also a lot of bad stuff. They yes, do. yes. But it does. It, it made me ponder that in the future, let's say there's incarcerated people computers are only going to be more integrated into our lives in the future is it just going to be a thing where you're you're still online even though you're incarcerated it's like you still have email you yeah. can do everything online it's just like a, a human right or whatever yeah um they can't take that away from you that, that'll probably never be the case but it seems like people have are getting around it even now just with cell phones yeah yeah uh and a couple of security and privacy stories um Hyundai and Kia forced to update software on millions of vehicles because of viral TikTok challenge. <laughs> no, I don't know anything about this because yeah. I stay as far away from TikTok as I can. Yes, but uh, apparently there was um, some very easy workarounds for starting vehicles, like tools as simple as a USB cable um, that was going around on TikTok and a bunch of cars were stolen. So they're having to, uh, they were 2000 to 15. 2015 to 2019 models uh so they are being forced to uh send out a security update which i like seeing them because we talk about you know cars it's like well as soon as you roll it off the lot are you ever going to get a software update for all these complex computer things in there Mm -hmm. or Um, if you do do you have to pay thousands of dollars to get it yeah yeah and it says previously hyundai was charging owners at least 170 dollars for security kits to fix the issue that is so lame we we programmed a crappy program full of security holes and you have to pay for it it's like what microsoft doesn't charge me for patch tuesdays so yes yes indeed and our other story dave i don't think we have talked about pig butchering on the podcast before let me think it sounds vaguely familiar but no no that was that was in one of my other discussions i think that (laughs) i was talking with or maybe just in my love for bacon yes with Uh, friends over dinner we were discussing butchering pigs yes yes well this is um a name for a scam uh, that is evolving fast. And this is an article from Wired talking about the scam. So basically what it is, is um, people kind of try to befriend you through a text message or social media. And, you know, maybe they send you some cute pictures of themselves and they want a relationship with you, but then they quickly want you to invest in some sort of stock or crypto or something else. Or pig butchering. (laughs) Or pig, or a share of a, uh, pigs uh, <laughs> products but is that really the thing yes like who is how is that interesting to people like what i could get in on the ground floor of a yeah. hog slaughtering operation no. or no it is purely stocks and financial what they're trying to get out of you is get money and i read through the article and i so the pig is a metaphor metaphor it's not a yes. real thing I yes see. um so the social engineering and uh, this guy who's a security researcher, he was actually going, he would tell them, he's like, I'm a security researcher. And one of them was like, are you a cop? And he said, no. And then they just kept on going with the <laughs> thing. Like, oh, whatever. <laughs> okay. As long as you're not law enforcement. I'll, um, but uh, Hey, pro tip. If someone asks you if you're a cop, always say yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, but Wait a minute. That might be bad advice, well, actually. Yeah. You might get shot. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's refrain from that. But if they're text messaging you and sending you cute pictures yeah. and then want you to invest in crypto, maybe just say you're a cop to yeah. uh, leave you alone. But um, like one of them, and I think I actually know a guy I was talking to that got involved with this one, but it's called like Meta Trader 4. Trader 4 and they've got these great looking websites and they want you to invest money and it'll even show you, hey, your investments are way up on this. So you put more in mm. um, and then you're just completely scammed. So yikes. Uh, yeah. Well, 
uh, as a side note here, if you are looking to run a scam like this and need a good website, yeah. check out consistmedia.com yes. and Nate will make a website for you at a low, low price uh, yes. that is affordable for, for you and your customers. Exactly. Yes. Thank you for that plug. Uh, well, let us move on to our bonus odd take. Um, this one, I think we've, we've probably had something similar in the past, but this one's called Wonders of Street View. And uh, it's actually from a friend of the bonus odd take, Neil.fun, that we've um, met mentioned before he's got the days since incident and the asteroid launcher yes um and possibly some other ones we'd mentioned i didn't realize he was an official well friend he, of. supplier of <laughs> bonus odd takes he, he probably knows nothing of us but, yes uh, anyway yes. so I, I click on this link and i see a fellow in the back of a, a little pickup truck on a couch with flowers surrounding him <laughs> yeah and it looks to be possibly either somewhere in the midwest or in another country a third world country i cannot yes, tell yes mine uh the one that loaded this time is a coffee shop a very cool looking coffee shop it says the coffee shop in austin texas and then in the background there are four people with uh looks like mouse or chipmunk heads sitting <laughs> in the back of the coffee shop so weird uh, it's just a bunch of really interesting there's one this is really cool camel view and it is a picture of dunes in mm. the united arab emirates and in the dunes you can see the shadow of the google street view equipment on yeah. top of a camel yeah i've seen similar to that uh, i clicked a random one and here Again, I have no idea where this is, but it is a McDonald's store, but the M's are teal instead of yellow. Oh, wow. So it's probably somebody ripping off the McDonald's brand. Yeah. Uh, it's probably not a McDonald's store, or it was a former McDonald's store that they rebranded as a taco <laughs> place or something. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> Called Mako's. Mako's. <laughs> Marcos, yeah, there, there's some fun ones on here. So that's uh, just to see interesting little things that uh, G Google Street View has picked up around the world. Oh, and I didn't notice up in the upper right-hand corner, oh, it yes, does yes. show the location. The one was Sedona, Arizona for the Blue McDonald's. But Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Well, not a Blue McDonald's, but just as interesting are picks of the week. So I'm going to go a little uh, non-techy on yeah. this pick of the week just because I looked through my Amazon search history, and yeah. this is what came up. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say most Americans eat way too much sugar. It's I not good agree. for you. It's addictive. It's corrosive to your body. In small quantities, it's fine, but, you know, take a cross-section of America as you're out and about, and you will see the girth of people is rather large these days. So to help combat that, if you have a sweet tooth like me, you might want to use some type of alternative sweetener. And so for years, I've used uh, Stevia to, to, to slightly sweeten my coffee or something like that. In all my travels, and it's, I have not traveled very far, I gotta admit, but I've tried several brands, several styles, several whatever, and I have landed on the Trader Joe uh, version of stevia that you can pick up in their store but you can also pick it up on amazon.com it's right around the same price and sometimes you can find a deal it is a little expensive but keep in mind that a small uh how many ounces is it it's a one ounce canister it mm -hmm. looks like a like a salt shaker about that size has 630 servings in it. Jeez, that's insane. It comes with a tiny little spoon that's almost comic. Yeah. It, when you I've look at it, you're like, before. what is this spoon? And you just take a little bit of it and you put it in there. It's a 100%, no fillers or anything, and it'll sweeten your cup of coffee. Of course, you can put in more than one scoop. I would not recommend it, but it lasts forever. And it's about 10 or $11 per ounce, which is about the same price as a starbucks uh freeze-dried coffee packet <laughs> have you ever seen those things yeah they're so expensive it's ridiculous so there's some sticker shock on this but yeah. it will literally last you a year or yes. longer and listeners you might remember this pick from episode 331 of the podcast the last time dave picked up i did this 331? april 13th 2022 so that was not that, that long good. ago <laughs> 
I knew I had picked it before. Yeah, yeah. I purchased that. So how long ago was that? That was... It's about a year, uh, right? April, yeah, almost a year. Ten yeah, months. So, so there you go. I picked it almost a year ago. It lasted me an entire year. And I drink coffee every single day. Yeah. And multiple cups. So so there you go. Organic Stevia Extract. Very from nice. Trader Joe's on Amazon. Very nice. And I will quickly say, as a side pick of that, if you live in our area, there is a new Trader Joe's in Tigard. I mm-hmm. believe it was an old uh, Safeway or something there, right at 99 and Durham Road. Yeah. Um, that is very once. nice. It's much more spacious than the Lake Oswego store, which is yes. a horrible parking lot and tiny. So. Yes. And the Lake Oswego store's uh, motto is Trader Joe's, where you're always in the way. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Well, my pick of the week uh, this week is um, two twofold because we already had a lot of news stories, so I wanted to jam a news story into this, but it's also a very useful tool. I know we've talked about it in the past, but I don't believe it's been an official uh, pick. I guess I should do the same search that I just did for Dave's pick, the previous pick of the week, and no, I do not see it. Uh, it is software called Parallels Desktop. Mm-hmm. Now, this is software for the Mac. It costs about $100 a year, and it allows you to install other operating systems um, on your Mac. So, with our new nice uh, shiny silicone, silicon-based chip Mac, Mm-hmm. Um, with the M1 or the newer ones have the M2 processor. It was very convoluted to get Windows 11 on there. You had to get this beta version that ran on ARM. Well, just a few days ago, Microsoft officially announced that Parallels Desktop is the official partner for Windows on the Mac. Okay. So Very there nice. is now within the software, I went in there before we record today, there's now used to go, I had to go to this website and sign up for a beta, beta program and download it and side install it. Now you just open it up and it says, get Windows from uh, Microsoft and you can do it with all within the software. So you have an officially supported version of Windows uh, that you can run on your newer Mac now. And so the side news is that Microsoft has an official version of the ARM yeah. version of Windows uh, 11 because before it was just beta, beta, beta. So that's neat that this partnership exists. And I will say that you don't have to subscribe to the yearly updates with Parallels. Uh, you can just not pay for the upgrade oh, okay. and continue to yeah. use it but you're going to miss out on features and updates if you choose to do that yes. on the previous version i did let it lapse probably half a year almost a year until i wanted windows 11 uh, and then gotcha. of course i had to upgrade yes don't think that you just have to pay have to you're pay. like stuck in it it's like you can yes. buy it use it and if you just are happy with your version of windows 11 if you don't use it very often you can just keep using it year yes. after year after year and it eventually will break but yes and i i will say too just to talk about parallels now some of you might have used boot camp in the past mm-hmm. to run windows on your mac where you had to reboot into windows and it completely took over the computer which is a great alternative i will say for people who have older macs older macs yes. who just want a windows computer just put windows on it and it <laughs> It'll compete with today's computers. It's yes. amazing. Yes, but with Parallels, it actually runs Windows as an application within the Mac OS. So I can open up Parallels on my computer. I can have a window that I can resize of Windows 11. I have access to all my Mac files. They've got a bunch of tools to kind of make them work really well together. It'll even, like if I've got a file on my Mac, and I'm just in my downloads folder in my Mac, and I right click and do the open with, it will actually list out the Windows applications and open up parallels and open the file within parallels. Uh, so it's really a nice feature if you have a use for that. I know most people don't, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I do find it very useful. So if there's like that one Windows program, you know, we've talked about other ways to do it. There's the Wine program, but yeah, if you want an hard. elegant way to open a Windows application or use Windows on your Mac, Parallels Desktop is the way to go. Yep, I would also recommend it. And they just, and we need to get Fortnite on ARM for Windows, and I can play Fortnite through my emulator on my Mac. Oh, 
come if on, people. Only, if only. Or we could just get Fortnite on the Mac. If well, I've got two Xboxes. Out. I guess I could play it on that. <laughs> or, or that. <laughs> and if you would like to get either of our picks or many of our other picks, don't forget to head over to notpicks.com uh, and check that out. We've got a bunch of our picks on there with Amazon affiliate links. And we do have a new giveaway. It is my favorite uh portable selfie stick oh slash boy. tripod <laughs> um, that I always carry one in my backpack because you never know when you're going to need uh, one of those. So uh, all you have to do is go over to the website, find some product that you've used or are aware of, write a quick review, write on notpicks.com, give it a star rating, and you'll be entered for the giveaway. Very good. I'm, I'm looking forward to all of our listeners rushing to notpicks.com yes. and filling out a review for a product so that everyone can be in this pool yes i'm tired of seeing the same old names in yeah, there yeah I, I we might have to make a wes rule of you know yeah. he's won two prizes already so yeah only two prizes a decade yes yeah the two prizes that he i was joking with him when i delivered his uh oh good job i'm delivering i it. finally delivered it to him and he said yeah I'm, I'm trying to convince lisa his wife to sign up and or to go in and write some reviews so it's not just him winning so they can still win prizes but it it doesn't have to be him. I mean, if he signs Lisa's name, no one's going to know. Yeah. Not that I would Pro condone tip. cheating. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, find some alternate uh, personalities on he's, there. He's going to go downtown. He's going to find some people who are unhoused and say, can you write a yeah. quick review for this? Yeah. And, Here, you know. borrow my phone for a while. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, well, with that, we will wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, share it with a friend. Go to notpicks.com because we do all of this to help you get out there and tech better. So I was at this podcast thing and oh my God. And, oh, oh, can you believe it? Oh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs>